What's poppin' y'all? Now, why be in the mirror is a name we have not heard in a while, especially since his last album released. I mean, he did sign with Def Jam for I think what was like an EP or a short album. I think it was Fast Life, something like that. Then he ended up getting dropped, unless it was like some sort of one album deal. I was very surprised why he even got signed. It didn't really make too much sense, but why be in the mirror has actually popped up again. And it was because he was supposed to fight on or he was requested to fight on Kick slash Aiden Ross's boxing card where he kind of creates these storylines. It's pretty interesting, actually, from a business perspective and a story perspective. It's somewhat like WWE, where he puts people in there that have a background and they may have had issues before or currently have issues. In this case, it was YBN Namir and Annoying TV, uh, the live streamer, who played GTA together before YBN Namir was even a thing. So they knew each other before the fame. They had some static for a while. I don't think they have any personal issues anymore. But Annoying was down to fight. Aiden Ross sends his team, said his manager, reached out to... (laughs) YB and Namir, and he said Namir asked for 100K. The manager laughed and hung up the phone. They said they were willing to give him 20K. I'm not going to lie. And then I, Namir maybe said something, or actually, I think Aiden probably went in on him first, where he said, Hey, man, you know, you haven't done anything. You're nothing. Your career is nothing, this and that. I think that's kind of cold because look at it like this if you're Namir, right? Your music career is already done, buried, six feet under. Coming back from this, you need a smash hit like no other. And from the music that YB and Namir has been making the past several years, he forgot how to even make a decent song, let alone make a hit song in the modern day that's going to go crazy. That's just not happening. And the people he's hanging out with, he's trying to make this West Coast music. Yeah, that is not hitting the mainstream. So that's out of the question. Now you want him to fight and think about it from Namir's perspective. The last two times he's probably seen an Aiden Ross headline is when he saw 21 Savage finesse like several hundred thousand dollars cheating, counting, not, was it count cards? It was marked cards, which is ironic because like Aiden Ross kind of describes that situation as like, yeah, man, it was unfortunate. Like what? What unfortunate? So he sees that. He sees, who was it? Playboy Cardi walk in there and walk out with two mil or less than two mil, whatever the case may be, not even show his face on camera say like love y'all and then dipped but pretty much had a concert on there dipped out with a bag and then even after that event happened 21 savage was on the phone with aiden ross and he's like yo you paid this guy how much 21 savage is probably looking at it like yo i've been pulling up on here for free I didn't know I could be collecting a bag. So you look like a lick. So from YBN Amir's perspective, he's like, yeah, 100K, I'll do it. And I don't even think that's an unfair amount for YBN Amir to request for this scenario. However, would I have paid YBN Amir 100K to fight on my card? Absolutely not. But this is one of those cases where it's just a mismatch. For instance, YBN Amir, he's about to fight Annoying. Annoying, like, he kind of gets memed. He's in the streaming community. Everyone in the streaming community kind of gets memed, whether they're like, or not. So if Annoying knocks out who's someone who's seen as unathletic, I believe he even has a health condition. So if this person that you were talking trash to, and now you're playing a gangster, you're like a crip or whatever the hell you are now, and then you get knocked out, beat up by Annoying, pack it up, pack it up, whatever was left. Like you're probably in a tent at this point, homeless under, not literally, but figuratively your career. You're underneath one of these highways or freeways, pack up the tent that you were living in, and you're going to have to get like an umbrella now. That's really it. I have you guys ever seen that in your cities where like there's homeless dudes with just umbrellas? It's kind of interesting because there's like classes. One of the cities that I had previously spent some time in, there's classes of homeless people. There's people that like have literally nothing. There's guys that have, I'm going on a tangent, I know, but bear with me. If you're here, just skip in a little bit if you don't care about my tangents. They've got umbrellas and then they've got, so that's one class. Then they've got mini tents, right? Little baby tent, enough for one person. Then they've got like a two person tent. You can bring someone else in there, pause. And then you've got... I literally witnessed this with my own eyes. Some guy had a gigantic family tent. I'm talking 16 people could have fit in there. He had a grill out front. He had like 14 bicycles. I I swear to God, I'm not exaggerating. So this person in the hierarchy of homeless, this guy is like the great Gatsby. He's balling. So in the case with YB and Amir, he would have to pack everything up and get out of there. He would have been the lowest class if he got beat up by annoying because he already had the, the problem with, what's his name? He already had the problem with Soul Soul Train. So he's already, like, the last memory that we have of Namir is not a good one. So I think he's like, man, you know, this is a stressful situation for me to be in. I might lose. 20K is... 
I mean, you're, you could probably get a, a feature for way less. I think Namir's probably selling features for pretty much damn near nothing now. I don't know if he's gotten to the point where he's scamming features. I don't know where in the rap career trajectory scamming features happens. Does it happen later when you've fallen off or does it happen when they're underground? I know a lot of scamming features happens underground. Never trust an underground rapper, by the way, especially if they're asking you, oh, yo, send this on Cash App, Venmo, whatever. Uh, hell no. Hey, you're probably funding his next album that he's going to blow up with and never give you your feature anyway so do not trust these underground rappers so circling back to namir then you know he did he was saying oh he would take 100k to fight aiden and then now it looks like he's cloud chasing because aiden just pretty much forgot about him and was like oh i'm not gonna entertain this guy anymore which i think is pretty smart and a powerful move when you're in a position such as that with a ton of money at your disposal your biggest currency past the money that he's got to throw around is your attention and he's trying to create these big events yeah but also we got to look at it like where does yb and namir have to go because the way i look at it is almighty j right he just did a fight on aiden's card i think he lost he got like he was getting whacked by some dude like four weight classes above him not gonna lie it was pretty brutal well it looked pretty brutal i don't know if he took that much damage like the guy was kind of just throwing a bunch of arm punches but nobody looks at almighty j any different i think he started dropping music after that too now the whole like presumption of this is going to help your music that is not the case maybe it'll get you attention sure on social media sure if yb and amir was still streaming gta this would be great for him i don't know if he's even live streaming anymore but to say it would help his music no not to mention namir's music still sucks so that's definitely not going to help his music. All in all, I think I don't I don't really have anything bad to say about Namir in this situation. He asked for a certain amount of money. He didn't get it. It didn't make sense for him to fight for 20K. I wouldn't hop in no ring for 20K. Are you crazy? 20K? 20K. I'm not saying that's not a lot of money. 20K is a lot of money, but hey, the risk to your reputation, the televised aspect of it, like, hey, everyone's paying attention to this and people are rooting on for you to lose and you're not even trained. I think and this, I think this is great from a viewer perspective. He throws these things in like four weeks in advance. So people don't even have real time to train and get in shape. And most of these people are completely out of shape in every possible regard you can imagine. So it makes for great entertainment. Although sometimes like the fights just don't even last long because they don't know the rules they don't know the fundamentals and it kind of looks sloppy and kind of harms the content you could say but yeah this this is probably going to be the last we hear of yb and amir for a very long time there was a call that he was on with academics i saw this clip on social media where he was saying yeah you know he's just enjoying his life he's done everything he's like 24 which i wonder where you go from there when you've succeeded at such a young age uh, granted, and Aiden Ross did try to play YB and Amir. I don't know if he said he was a one-hit wonder, but YB and Amir pulled out his platinum plaques. He pulled out a platinum mixtape. He's done a lot, especially at his age. And I wonder how it feels to have, for sadly, peaked at age 19, kind of seen everything. And then now you're just what, 24? Meanwhile, other people younger than you or your same age are just taken off. It's something I don't envy for sure. And I think that's one of the things I really appreciate for when it comes to a slow grind and just slow incremental improvements as opposed to, yeah, you improve slowly and then boom, you blow up and then you crash because the crash feels way worse than you did before you even made it. But let me know what y'all think in the comments. Like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Peace.